Hi, welcome to another video. So, Microsoft has been on a streak to make VS Code basically like Cursor or Windsurf. They started giving out GitHub Copilot for free, and then they made Copilot Edits, which is an option that allows Copilot to directly edit files and whatnot. But now, they have made some new upgrades, and I wanted to talk about them. So, let's do that. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Photogenius AI. Photogenius AI is an all-in-one AI-powered art generator that allows you to type anything and get stunning visuals instantly. Photogenius AI gives you all kinds of image generation models in one place, whether it be Flux, Stable Diffusion, Kardinsky, or any image generator model that you can think of. They have also recently added their new 3D generation suite, which allows you to give it a prompt or an image, and it can generate a 3D model for you that you can use anywhere. Not just that, it also gives you the option to do advanced AI image editing as well, with their cool AI tools like an AI avatar generator, background removal, logo generator, emoji generator, or even add an app icon generator. And the best part is that it starts at only $10. And you can get an additional 25% off these already great deals by using my coupon code KING25. So, make sure that you check out photogenius.ai through the link in the description and generate some cool stuff with it. Now let's come back to the video. The first thing they have now done is enable vision for copilot which means that the copilot chat will now allow you to send in images that it can use to make things work accordingly which is quite cool to see this feature is only available on the vs code insiders version and you'll see that the vs code insiders version will be required to access some other new features as well one of the major new things that copilot now has is agent mode so, if you use the VS Code Insiders, you'll now have an agent mode inside Copilot Edits. What this means is that it can iterate on its own code. This includes automatically identifying and fixing errors, executing terminal commands to complete a requested task, and resolving runtime errors with self-healing capabilities. It can now infer other tasks that were not specified but also need to be completed in order for your explicit request to work. Basically, what it means is that it now has a feature similar to how Klein works or the agentic mode that Windsurf or Cursor have, which is pretty good to see because they own VS Code and can easily integrate it into the core if they want to do that. It is currently only available on VS Code Insiders. There's also a new feature called Next Edit Code Suggestion. This is similar to the Cursor tab autocomplete, where if you edit something at the top, it will predict what should be updated next. For example, if you update a variable name at the top, it will predict that wherever you use that variable, it should also be updated to the new name, which is quite cool and makes changes rapid. They say that with this new ability, Copilot will suggest revisions to your code, comments, tests, and more. Next edit suggestions help you edit code that you have previously written and that needs to be updated to better meet your current goals. It will look something like this, and when you're presented with an edit suggestion, you can navigate to it with the tab key and then accept it with the tab key again saving you time in finding the next relevant edit. There's also the prompt files. This is basically like rules or context that you can supply to Cursor, Windsurf, Klein, or any other. You can give it context or a rule in a file or anything like that, and it can follow that. You are also able to do it on an enterprise level, and stuff which could be beneficial for people who work in a company and need to have context of a specific code, or need it to code in a specific manner, or something like that. 
Copilot edits are also now generally available, which means that it is now more stable and usable as well. One more thing is that they are working on Project Padawan, which is an SWE agent that allows you to raise issues on GitHub, and then you can just allocate that issue to GitHub's agent, which will spin up a sandbox, and the AI will solve that issue and give it back to you without you doing anything, which is kind of cool. This is not usable yet, but the demos look cool nonetheless. Some more stuff to mention is that Gemini 2.0 Flash is also now available. And one more thing is that O3 Mini is now also available even on the free version, which means that we can now use it with the agentic mode and everything. One more thing is that we can now also use the free O3 Mini with Klein as well. So, I'll show you that as well. Now, most of the new Copilot features are only available in VS Code Insiders. So, let me just quickly show you how you can get it all installed. First, just come here and download the VS Code Insiders version. Once that's installed, just open it. Here, you'll need to go to Extensions, then search for GitHub Copilot and install it, and also install GitHub Copilot Chat, and then sign yourself up or sign in as you see fit. Now, what you'll see is that in the right sidebar, we have two options. The first is the general copilot, and the other is the edit with copilot option. In edit with copilot, you'll see that you now have some new models like Gemini and O3 Mini, which all look good, and now you can also use them in Klein. So, you can just go to Klein and select VS Code LM API. Here, you'll see the new O3 Mini option as well, if you want to use it and everything like that. Anyway, let's move to the main thing, which is Agent Mode. Here, you can see this new dropdown, which consists of Edit and Agent. Edit is the general edit function that Copilot had, but the new option is Agent Mode, which is similar to how Cursor's agentic feature works or how Klein works. You can select it and then choose the model you want to use. In agentic mode, it only supports Claude, Gemini, and GPT-4.0. I recommend that you use Claude in this case. Anyway, let's try something and test it a bit. So, this is a basic Expo app, and it has a bunch of starter template files. I want it to build a basic AI chat app that uses the OpenAI SDK. I want it to be simple and good-looking. Klein and Windsurf are able to one-shot this while Cursor struggles a lot. So, let's see how well it performs. Okay, it's now doing that. You can see that it's pretty similar to Windsurf in terms of how things look and everything like that. It is also quite fast, actually. I mean, when you see Claude and Windsurf or others, it gets a bit laggy, but this looks quite fast. Anyway, if we wait a bit, then it's done. And if we run it, then this works pretty well here, and it's quite great. Cursor struggles with this prompt, which is not at all good, but this is quite good. It is fast and works well, although some things are a bit buggy at times because it's experimental. For example, to approve the changes that it has made, you need to navigate through tabs as it doesn't show the files directly in the chat for approval or anything like that. So, that needs to be fixed. One more thing that it now has is the next edit suggestion. So, we can just enable it in the settings. And now if we change something, let's just change this variable name here. Now, once we do that, you'll see that it will automatically predict the next change, which you can see here. Now, we can just hit tab, and then another tab. Once we do that, you'll see that the next change gets applied, and now the errors are resolved. This is actually quite good, and makes changes quite easy to do if you're working in larger files. Cursor and Windsurf have this, so this is also good in Copilot. 
I believe GitHub Copilot is now quite good, and these new features make the $10 plan worth a lot more than before, and many students and employees already get GitHub Copilot for free. So, you can use it in different ways, and the O3 Mini API is also good to use. I think the $10 plan for this is quite good and easy to use. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.